all by myself. Yeah, working up on that farm. Oh, but I don't even need Nick. I don't even miss Nick. This is Mike's. You can solo that right now, you nerds. You better buckle up and get ready because we're doing farming Uwe Rosenberg style. That's right. I'm here to talk about Hallertau and specifically, how is it when you play Hallertau by yourself? It is a soloable game. It plays one to four players. And whenever I see that pesky little one, I'm like, do you mean it? Is it good if you play it on its own? Uh, or do you really want to have a multiplayer experience? So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think of Hallertau as a solo experience specifically, but what I'm going to do is tell you all about how the solo is implemented and how it differs from the normal way of the game. So I'm not going to go into all the details about how Hallertau plays, but I'll tell you this. It's an Uwe Rosenberg farming game. You're getting resources, you're growing crops, you're raising animals, and you're trying to turn in all that stuff to ultimately build up and kind of uh, convert and uh, work on your community center and play out cards that are eventually gonna be worth points and things. So that's what you're trying to do, is trying to do all these different things to gain points um, and managing your crops and stuff. Very much Uwe Rosenberg type of stuff. But I'm gonna quickly show you how Hallertau works for solo and just a heads up, it's very minimal, but check it out. In Hallertau, you'll be using cards in a pool of workers to produce resources, manage your crops, and raise a healthy flock of sheep in order to fix up your community center to score the most points possible. In all games less than the maximum player count of four, players draw a quadrant card to dictate which area or areas of the board you remove workers from each round. In a solo game, you will refer to the solo play section of the quadrant card, removing the top row of workers from each action space in that quadrant. In all other ways, a solo game follows the normal course of a multiplayer game, with the exception being that you take your action one after another with a goal of getting the highest score possible with Uwe suggesting that a score of 100 is considered good which I promise you I've never gotten within 30 points of. So that's it. Halatau like literally is just uh, you play it normally except for there's no one around so you just take your turns over and over and over again and those little quadrant cards which you, you, you use for one to three player count games um, you just, instead of doing, if it's a two or three player game, you look at the little one and clear off the action spaces for that player count in that quadrant. So that's it. <laughs> the rest of it is simply playing the game. There is no AI opponent or anything like that that you are trying to beat. It's simply a beat your own score type of situation, which a lot of the Uwe Rosenberg games, uh, when you solo them, that's really what it comes down to. It's just like, what's the highest score you can possibly get? and try to beat your score from last time. Try to be as efficient or what have you as you can. And in this one, I actually kind of like the way that the, uh, the quadrant cards work because it sort of simulates a normal game with other players because with more players, there's more people going to action spaces, which makes those the progression of those spaces as they become more expensive. The more times a, you go to a worker placement spot, it becomes more expensive for you. So in a one player game, you just simply remove fewer workers in between rounds. So it keeps kind of traffic out on the board a little more, which kind of when I was playing really did make me feel like uh, kind of a more multiplayer experience where I was like, I can't just go to the same action space time and time again, because it might not get cleared up between rounds. It might be completely full. So I need to think of something different, which is also what would happen in a multiplayer game where someone goes to a spot before I can get there. Now I can't afford to go to that spot or I don't want to pay that many workers and I have to go elsewhere. So it actually works kind of well, despite it being so minimal. Like this is the least present uh, solo mechanic I think I've seen. Like it really is minimal. It's like once per round, you flip over a quadrant card, clear a couple workers, and then you just go. And um, I actually really enjoy that in this game. That's, I guess, what we're here to talk about. It's like, what do I think of that? I really like it. Um, I don't mind in this case. Typically, I like having an AI that I need to beat. I like having a win-loss condition in solo games. With Uwe Rosenberg, both like a Feast for Odin and now this, I don't mind it that much because there's so much to kind of explore in terms of how to like best use my resources, what do I want to focus on? What cards am I going to try to get out and play? And what is that going to provide me? What directions? Um, I, I, I'm more than happy, at least for now, to simply explore and really try to be as good as I can be at the game without any of the pressure of taking up other people's time. That's one thing I really generally enjoy about solo experiences is that 
I can just think about stuff for a while. I can put something out and sort of think about it. No, I'll take that back. I'm gonna try this instead. Uh, yeah, now maybe I will stick with that. And I don't mind because I'm always very conscious of other people's time when playing games. I'm not gonna min-max and stuff like that because I would just rather keep everyone engaged rather than find a way, one out of 32 ways to get one more point. It's just not interesting to me. I don't wanna take up other people's time like that. But here, it's just my time. I'm gonna use it how I want to. So I can take as much time or as little time as I like, and I really enjoy that. And on that note, having a, a solo mechanism that is so minimal, like literally, it's just in between rounds when you reset, you flip over that quadrant card and remove some workers. It takes no brain power of mine to think up, how does a solo work again? When do I activate this or that? I just take away some workers and then I get to proceed. So I get to use all of my limited brain space for strategy. Another reason why I don't mind uh, this solo where you're just taking your turn one after another after another is this game features basically no player interaction in a multiplayer game. The player interaction is limited to, oh, you went to this spot before I could go. Now that spot is either gone or more expensive or, oh, I was gonna take a card from the stack and you took a card, but I will have no way of knowing until you play that card what that card would even be. So we're not even in direct competition for anything specific, but there are card stacks on the board and maybe somehow you got the card that would have been destined to be mine or whatever. But again, I'm never gonna know that. It's not a direct competition. There's basically no interaction whatsoever. You're just trying to outplay your opponents on your own time, on your board, doing your thing. And the only competition is the, is the spaces. And with a quadrant card removing fewer workers in between rounds, it simulates that just fine. So playing solo and playing multiplayer does not change your experience very much. So again, like when I'm playing solo, I'm like, great. It's basically multiplayer solitaire, the best kind of game already. So uh, that doesn't bother me at all. And my kind of final thoughts on this is that I really enjoy this game a lot. And having a solo mode or the way to play solo being so easy to do, it makes this game even easier to get to the table and play. For a big Uwe game, when we started playing this, I was like, man, this is kind of like more accessible than like a Caverna or a Feast for Odin, if nothing for the fact that there are fewer pieces to put out on a board. That's not to say that there are no pieces to put on the board. There still is a lot of stuff going on, but it still feels a little lighter, a little more accessible than other Uwe products and then having such an easy way to kind of set up for a solo game you don't have to change really hardly anything other than the quadrant cards aren't even different you just look at a different area of that card that's great that's easy like i really can't make up my mind that if like th this solo mode is brilliant or incredibly lazy i don't know and ultimately i don't really care i'm just happy playing the game and that's my takeaway. Am I having fun while playing this solo? The answer is yes. I really do enjoy it. So if you need a more robust, uh, kind of in your face confrontational AI opponent, this will not be your jam. But also if you're into Uwe Rosenberg farming type games, this is, you, the solo makes sense for the setting. <laughs> like it would make sense if someone's just like, I killed your sheep. And now you're poor and sad. You know, it's like, that's not how these games are built. Uh, it fits and everything fits. And again, the, th the fact that the solo is so easy and it's just about you trying your very best to think up the best strategies uh, really works for me. So I really enjoy it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a great or horrible solo in terms of the ideas, but it really works. So I guess there you have your answer. Um, I recommend Hallertau as a solo because I recommend it as a game and playing it solo did not diminish my enjoyment of playing it at all. Um, it was a great way for me to learn the game so that when I taught it to Nick, I was really up to speed and up and running because I'd seen how everything kind of worked and moved and shake. So I feel like I was a better teacher of the game. It was very easy to get up and running solo because I didn't have to think about how another player works, I can just focus on what I'm doing. So it's a great way to learn the game and I highly recommend that. That's it for me, everybody. That's Hallertau. I like the solo. I think it's great. It's incredibly minimal, so just know that, but it does work very well. Uh, let me know if you've played Hallertau, whether or not you've played a multiplayer or solo, how do you like the game? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. If you want to see us do a review of a different solo uh, experience of a game that we own or that you've heard about and like, let us know in the comments as well. And until next time, that's been Mike, Table for One. That's stealing from Watch It Played. There's probably some other clever solo-y thing. It's just me today. That's the point. We'll see you in the next one.
Thanks so much for checking out another You Can Solo That. If you want to see what Nick soloed last time, you can check it out right up there. If you click on something down there, it's going to take you somewhere fun. And don't forget to subscribe to the Brothers Murph and turn the bell icon on so that you get notifications for when we have new videos.